Okay, and now final YouTube for the year, I think. Um, we're going to be looking at graphing our, um, our final type of, of, of graph, and that is the hyperbola. Um, so we start off with a function you know, that looks like this. We haven't, we haven't done any of these yet. 1 over x. All right, so we've, we've looked at, just to take you back, we've looked at these ones, which resulted in those. We looked at uh, these ones, which resulted in these. This was exponential. This is quadratics, parabolas. Um, oh, yeah, we had a look at, um, didn't we, x squared plus y squared equals something, which resulted in these. Um, and now we're having a look at what this results in, 1 over x. So we've got x in the denominator now. What, what can we find here? So um, as we've done throughout, let's get some points together, some x, y points. Um, this is always our starting point. So uh, the first thing, first thing that should come to, to mind here is, as with all these, they're usually putting in x equals 0 gives us a starting point. Um, and as I like to do, I like to have a, uh, a, running, a, running, a running graph going. So let's get our axes up. All right, so we're calling that x, calling that y. All right, now, um, right, as, x equals, as x equals 0, I'm going to go again, because I'm going to go either side of 0. I'm going to put 0 in the middle here somewhere. Um, right, when x is 0, what happens? 1 divided by 0. Tell me what you think is the result when y equals 1 divided by 0. What's the, what's the value of y when we make x equal to 0? Okay, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you've said um, something along the lines of that can't be calculated. You divide, divide by 0, um, there is no solution to that. How do you divide by 0? So in here, we're going to put, uh, I don't know, question mark, no solution, can't do it. So there is nothing. No, the question mark's not very good, is it? There is no solution to this. So I'm going to write no solution. No solution. There is nothing we can, there is no value of y for x equals 0. So what does that mean? I, I, can't, I can't plot a point at x equals 0. Okay. All right, let's come back to that. Let's get in some values that we can, we can jot down. When x is 1, y equals 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, isn't it? So 1, 1 is a point. Let's go to 1, 1. There it is there. All right, when x is, when x is 2, all right, we got 1 over 2. So we've got 1 over 1 half. This is dead easy, isn't it? When x is 3, we can continue the theme here. Um, when x is 3, 1 third. When x is 4, so 1 quarter. So if we start to plot these points, 2, a half. That's not 2. 1, 2 is a half there. Beg your pardon. Right, 2, a half. Right, then we go three a third, four a quarter. Okay, and what's happening here? Take it out to a hundred. It's one over a hundred. So the bigger x get, the gets the smaller y gets. However, we never get zero, do we? We can't put a value of x in here that's going to give us zero. One over something is always going to be. So right down here, and what do we call that? What do we call that line there? The x-axis that acts as a buffer. That word again, asymptote. So the x-axis is an asymptote. Okay, so let's see what happens now. I've stopped here at 1, 1 because I don't know what's happening. In fact, I haven't left any room, have I, for anything between 0 and 1. So that was poor on my part. So I'm going to have to get rid of this situation and just put in a couple of fractional values. So a half seems obvious. I want to put in a quarter as well. All right, now I'll get my 0 back in there with no solution. Okay, so when x is a half, I've got 1 divided by a half. Now that could be causing some problems. 1 divided by a half. How do we deal with that? How many halves are in 1? Okay, well the soon you divide by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So 1 divided by a half is the same as 1 times 2. There's 2. You can look at it in a few ways. The, how many halves are in 1? There's 2 halves in 1. How many, for 1 over a quarter, how many, a qu how many quarters in 1? There's 4 quarters in 1. One over a fifth, one over so, so just as just as as x gets larger here, y gets smaller. As x gets smaller between x, between naught and one, these fractional values, y is going to get larger, isn't it? So, what did I say? A half, it's two, a third. So small, the smaller, the tighter I get in here to the y-axis, the higher it gets up here, and we get the same scenario with the y-axis. It also acts as an asymptote. So our x and y axes are both asymptotes. We've got a curve here that doesn't touch either axis. There are no intercepts. 
Okay, um, but there's a bigger picture, isn't there? There's a bigger picture. Let's get rid of x and y. We need some more space for some negative values. Right, what about negative a half? What about minus 1? What about you know, minus 2, etc.? As we go down this way, uh, minus 3, <coughs> excuse me, minus 4. Right, get rid of these little calculations. Um, and uh, okay, and we can just have our, we'll have our x, y's there. Right, it's a much bigger table than I anticipated. Okay, so let's go to minus 1 for starters. 1 divided by minus 1, uh, that's minus 1, isn't it? 1 over minus 1. 1 over minus 2, these are just negatives of what I had over here. Minus a third, 1 over minus 4 is minus a quarter. So let's have a look at where these go. Minus 1, minus 2 is minus a half, minus 3 is minus a third, minus 4 for x is minus a quarter for y. And you can see what's going on here. I've got an asymptote developing. What's going to happen in here between 0 and 1? When x is minus a half, 1 divided by minus a half, it's going to be minus 2. Minus 2, so at minus a half, I've got minus 2. At minus a quarter, I'll have minus 4. And so I've got these two branches in what's called a hyperbola. So that's that's where we are. This is a hyperbola, a, a, um, a discontinuous graph. So let's get that in there. This here is a hyperbola. Just as this was a parabola, this is an exponential, this is a circle, this is a hyperbola. That's one on x. That's my little table of summarizing the last few lessons where we've been looking at types, different types of graphs. Okay, so there's my graph of one on x, and the real, the real features of it are these asymptotes. So if we go in to, I'll just pause for a second. Okay, so what we've got on the screen now is is the uh, is the graph, the hyperbola, one over x. Just have a just have a look up here, left of screen. I've got my um, function of x equals a over x. A is set at one at the moment, so this is currently one over x. And as a moves, I want to have a look at the um, the result. So as we make a, a larger, we're now looking at one and a half over x. It's heading out towards two. It's pretty slow moving, but you can see the effect as I'm tracing out. So it just gets further away from the origin. Just gets um, just gets wider, further away from the origin there. Um, as we bring it, so we, you know, just if I plug a, a number in here, uh, ten to the power, uh, ten over x, you can see that it would start. It just keeps heading out. Okay, if we now head back the other way and see what's going on, get it back to one over x, um, erase those traces, and I'll bring it in. So this this now is getting closer to 1, so I'm reducing the values of A, and you can see it gets, you know, it's getting tighter to the origin, and like so. Now, what I want to do is see what happens when this flips around into a negative value. So, now let's have a look. Rah, what happened there? It just flipped. So, I can't really see the effect of that, so I might go back into there. 1 over x, we're back to 1 over x, and I'm just going to take the trace off there. Take the trace off. Right, so now let's have another look. As a reduces in value, gets closer to 0, gets closer into the axis, to the, sorry, to the origin. You can see what's going on there. It's getting really close. What happens right at, <laughs> right at a equal to 0? We're basically just graphing a straight line, y equals 0 along the x-axis. But now, what happens? As a turns negative, it flips into the other two quadrants. So um, I'll put minus at the moment, it's uh, minus one half, minus two to the power of x, so I'll just hold it at, and it'll just get further and further away from the axis. So it's minus two to the power of x, sorry, minus two over x right there. So you're just using the other two quadrants up. So if we go back and have a look at uh, a graph for that, then it would be, and you want this for your notes, you'd have a look at just putting your axes in, x and y, and then sketching into this quadrant and this quadrant. And this would represent y equals something, uh, but we'll say it's minus 2 over x. Uh, remember, that's, that's quite wide out, isn't it, that there? And, the, and the, the higher this number here, the further out it gets from, from the origin. Okay, so that's pretty much it for hyperbolas. Um, we can get on with now the last exercise 
in the chapter we're doing, um, chapter 7, so it's exercise 7i, and then we can just uh, get stuck into some revision for the, for the, for the uh, term test and also the yearlies. Okay, see you soon.